Hi everyone and welcome to episode 20 of Teach Tech Play. I'm Eleni Karitsis and I'm the host. Now tonight we have a great show with some fantastic educators from around the world. Now in saying that before we get started I just want to introduce my two co-hosts who are here tonight. So I've got both Steve Brophy and Michael Ha. So do you two just want to say a quick hello to everyone and then I'll get started with the other information. Age before beauty, Michael. Does that mean I'll go first? Just uh, it's uh, hello to everybody. Um, I'm Steve Brophy. I'm director of ICT and e-learning at Ivanhoe Grammar, uh, and was lucky enough to be hosting the Teach Tech Play conference uh, just past. So hello to everybody. And Michael. Hi everyone. Um, my name's Michael. I'm the e-learning leader at Newington College in Sydney, um, New South Wales, in Australia, and feel really inspired after the conference. I can't wait to see this video again that Eleni is about to show us. Perfect. Thanks, guys. So it was a little while ago that we had our last show. So our last show was in March, and I must say we must congratulate, first of all, Brett Hughes from Matific. Um, he shared Matific with us, which is a maths app that I know I use, and he shared this at the conference as well, and I know it's been a big hit for a lot of educators, so make sure that you do ask him if you've got any questions or um, definitely try it out because it is a great tool to use. Now, we did have our conference, uh, it's funny to think that it was a month ago, it feels like it was just yesterday, six months in preparation, it all came together with a fantastic event of 300 plus teachers in the end and um, I was absolutely blown away. As we've always said, Teach Tech Play is designed by teachers for teachers and I think the conference really showed that, having some fantastic educators all come together and share what they do in the classroom. The connections that were made and the ideas that were shared were just phenomenal and we're just going to share with you all now a little snippet of the conference. So in case you weren't there, just to show you and hopefully we get to see you there next year. So I'll just share my screen. So just remember for tonight as well to make sure you vote for your favourite presenter. The link is bit.ly forward slash TTPE20 vote and make sure you've got the capitals. We'll also tweet it out. And we are going to continue using the hashtag TTPlay. So even for tonight, if you're viewing, um, you can follow TTPlay on Twitter and see all the conversation and all the links to what our presenters are sharing. So this, I'm not going to play the whole video. You can see this video up on our website. That's teachtechplay.com or you can also go to our YouTube channel. But I'm just going to share a little bit of it with you. I'm just going to stop it there because I'm not going to go into all the discussion that happens but you can as I said I'm sure that we'll be tweeting it out now as well so if you do want to watch the rest of it um, definitely check it out. That was the closing keynote run by the students of Ivanhoe Grammar and they spent the two days putting that together so it was amazing to have the students involvement and the buzz that they've even had from the conference and the ideas that they're thinking for next year I know is absolutely phenomenal. So not only do we think of the feedback that we've received from all of our attendees who came, so thank you to all of you, but we've also taken on feedback from the students and I must say they have some pretty cool ideas. It's just up to us now, isn't it Steve, to put their ideas in action. So 
Um, it's a bit of a challenge, but we'll we'll make it happen. So um, yeah, keep an eye out because we were we have started planning. I know I did say at the conference that we were going to have some time off, but because of the buzz and excitement, we haven't really stopped and we've kept going. So we are planning next year's. Now, in just regards to that. Um, Obviously, Teach Tech Play, we had a lot of teachers come together and we did have some great ideas shared by other teachers. And two teachers in particular, Matt Handley and Ben Lannan, um, two Victorian teachers, suggested that it would be great to have a Twitter um, chat. So I've had a little idea as well from that. And what we're going to do is next Monday, we're going to launch a Teach Tech Play conversation. So the conversation will allow you guys as viewers to have a go of playing with the tools that we are sharing here tonight. And if you are using them in your classroom, then next week you can come back in and through this conversation, you can share and connect with other teachers because that's what we're all about is connecting teachers with others to help um, improve their teaching and learning. So. Um, that's pretty much it. Steve, did you have anything else you wanted to say from Ivanhoe's point of view? Just make sure I'm unmuted. No, we're, um, we're excited about being able to host it next year. Year. So, so, yeah, I've just yeah, yeah, just one of my students, Luke, he's uh, actually he's just tweeted out he's uh, busy watching. So, yeah, it's excited to see how many kids are involved and to grow it next year. So, it'll be awesome. So, pressure's on now. <laughs> Alrighty, we might get started with tonight's show and not hold it up any longer. So we have got some fantastic presenters from around the world joining us tonight. So we might start off with Dean, if you want to just introduce and tell us where you're from and a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, I'm Dean Pierman. I'm the Director of Learning Technologies and Innovation at the Peninsula School in Mount Eliza, lovely Mornington Peninsula. So I get to see the sea every day. Uh, I teach across the creative arts and also in the science area, which is an odd mix for an art teacher to be in the science area, where I do robotics and coding and all that sort of stuff. So um, I'm buzzing, as everyone else has been, about the conference. I think it was just an exciting time to see all the great things that we uh, possible with technology. So I'm glad to be here and share some of my ideas tonight. Perfect. Thanks, Dean. Next up, we've got Rebecca. So, Rebecca Madrid, do you want to tell us where you're from and what you do? Just remember to yep. unmute. Yep. Um, I'm Rebecca Madrid. I teach at Yokohama International School, which is outside Tokyo, um, so which is where I live. Um, I'm originally from the States, if this accent didn't give it away, uh, and I teach middle school, primarily middle school social studies, uh, MYP, but I also teach uh, DP history. So. My grade 12s are taking their exam like tomorrow, and I'm very nervous for them. Um, so, and then lots of other hats as well. Beautiful. Thank you for joining us, and good luck to your year 12s tomorrow. Thank you. Next up, we've got um, Tim Kitchen, who I know was a massive hit at the conference, so we're very lucky to have him join us tonight as well. Thanks, Eleni. Yeah, Tim Kitchen here. I uh, am currently in Newcastle, New South Wales, but I live in Melbourne and I work for Adobe as their senior education specialist after being a Melbourne-based uh, independent school teacher for the last 23 years. So uh, that's me, and I'm looking forward to sharing four minutes with you very, very shortly. Perfect. Thank you, Tim. And last but not least, we have Lee all the way from the UK. So do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, uh, my name is uh, Lee Parkinson, um, otherwise known as Mr. P. Uh, I'm a primary school teacher in Manchester, England, um, not too far from Old Trafford, uh, where the Mighty Reds uh, play. Uh, and yeah, right, I've been a teacher now for sort of nine years. Uh, I still work time at my school, and then I also run sort of training and inset at other schools uh, around the country. So I try to sort of specialise in the use of technology to support like maths and English and how it can really sort of raise standards in those areas. Perfect. Thank you, Lee, for sharing that. Now, the order for tonight, we'll start off with Dean and then we'll get going through. So, Dean, you have four minutes. Let me know when you are ready and I will start the timer and um, off you go. Let's and go. I'll give you a one-minute warning. 
Okay, uh, so my little talk, four minutes, is hard to quantify all the technology that I use in four minutes, but I'm going to try. I'm going to show you two apps tonight. Um, my sort of theme is about making learning stick, so I'm really interested in how you can curate information with technology that impacts my teaching the next day. So the app that I'm going to show you, and I'll share my screen in a moment, is Flipgrid. Uh, Flipgrid is sort of like any type of curatorial type of uh, work that you can use online where students can, you can pose a video question and then students can upload a video question there. So I ran a little um, activity that I used to do with my students all the time called the Friday Stand-Ups. So every Friday the students would have to focus and reflect on their learning for that week. And I asked them three questions in the Flipgrid. What am I doing? Where am I going? And how am I going to get there? And so after that Friday, I'd then look at those over the weekend and assess what my feedback would be that would move their learning to the next stage. So it was a really, really powerful way to assess their learning, to see what they're doing, to make it a little bit more visible. Uh, also used it with hinge questions during class or exit and entry passes as well, um, but also with digital portfolios. And I'll show you really quickly what it looks like. So I'll share my screen. So it's on my iPad right now. So there's Flipgrid. And basically, once you've set up the Flipgrid, you can uh, give out a hashtag. And I made one for tonight, TC Play, Dean Pierman. So this is live right now, if I could spell my name right. Uh, and my keyboard just decided to die on my iPad. Let's just restart that again. So I made TTP, the TT Play, and Dean Pierman is the link. And if you hit go, it should open up a question. And so that's live right now. And my question is, you'll have to watch the Flipgrid video question to respond to it. So that's one of the ways in terms of just assessing data and curating information. The other app that I'm currently really enjoying using is something called TalkBoard. Uh, TalkBoard, again, allows you to have collaboration with around anything that you're wanting to do with your students' learning. So you can make a board, and you can have ideas and different boards in there. And you can draw, you can add audio, um, you can insert images, you can give feedback, you can see the learning grow, and the students can add and collaborate um, around their learning on these boards also. And so, as you can see, I've got some images from tonight in there, and you can annotate, and you can develop ideas, and you can give feedback to students anytime you like, and it's real time. So if anyone else had this open currently and I start annotating directly on the student's work or someone's work, that would actually work. I am an art teacher. It's okay. I can draw like that. Um, that would allow students to get real-time feedback whenever they are on the app. So my favorite one certainly is Flipgrid. And I'll share the hashtag. You can directly share the hashtag out to anyone once you make them. I think it's about $60 US and you get 10 grids that you can add any um, range of questions to there. So you get 30 seconds for the question, and the students, uh, top of my head, I think they get a little bit longer than that um, to respond to the question. But once they do that, you get likes, and the students I've had once one, they're... One, one minute. minute. Once the students are commenting on each other's learning, they're really powerful in terms of peer feedback, peer assessment, just to understand where the students are at in their learning. And the Friday stand-ups idea came from um, one of my friends who works in a design studio. And every Friday, his team, they called it the War Room. So we sort of renamed the our space the War Room, where students went to war with their learning. And they used this idea of, what am I doing? How am I going? And where am I? how am I going to get there? Was the sort of questions they looked at. And it was a really simple way for them to articulate uh, their learning. So Flipgrid is definitely an ace resource in your arsenal, in your app arsenal. And it's easy to use, really intuitive design. And um, you can curate hundreds of videos. And you could use them at conferences and anything along those lines. So that's 
Flipgrid. Perfect timing. And that's timing. my buzzer. Perfect timing. There you go. Did anyone have any questions for Dean? I try to post a, a, an answer to your Flipgrid and it didn't pop up. Bummer. <laughs> Did it? I'll go, I have to go into it. Yeah. Now, you the did. Really like I got you, Michael. Um, Sorry, you're in there. Yeah. I can oh, see it. Nice. That's all right. The thing I really like about the app, too, when you have a lot of videos in a flip grip, it scales really nicely for you. It's got a really nice visual UI nice. to it. So yep. um, that's one thing that I really, really like about the app. It's, and it's easy to use. It's really, really simple to use. And the one thing that we had is students making accounts, and they obviously created their own flip grids and they had their, their partners or anyone around that you could respond to. So it's definitely worth having a look at. I'll, Dean, it I'll works tweet on the every device. device. Yeah, it works, on, it works on any device. So you can use it on Android if you've got one, and I'm sorry, but you can go anywhere um, in any browser as well. It's pretty intuitive. Yeah. iPads, it's really, really good on iPads. And I know that, Dean, you said it was $60 US. And in that, do you set up a class account or do students create their own individual accounts? You, I think you'd have to... Yeah, I think you get... There's a free version that just limits the amount of grids that you can have. Yeah. The only thing to be sort of cautious on is the... I think it's 13 plus. So mm -hmm. for primary students, you'd probably have to be... The person, so you've got to just consider those things. I was okay because I was using it with senior students, yep. um, but I think if it's sixty dollars, it's ten grids. I think you get that you can use. Perfect. So I'll, I'll post it out, and um, everyone can sort of respond to it. And I'll send it out the hashtag. Perfect. Thank you for sharing that, Dean. Next up, we're going to have Tim Kitchen, who will be sharing with us about getting involved with the. Adobe Education Exchange. So, Tim, let me know when you're ready and I'll start the timer. Sure. Thanks, Eleni. I'm just going to start sharing my screen now and hopefully you can see my opening slide. Eleni, just let me know that you can see it. Yep, perfect. Good. All right. I enjoyed the Teach Tech Play conference uh, very much and uh, it was great to meet a whole lot of new people as it always is at these sorts of events. And uh, so just to introduce myself again, um, it's uh, Tim Kitchen and uh, Senior Education Specialist for Adobe in the Asia-Pacific region. There's my Twitter and email and uh, my blog if you're interested in uh, keeping in touch. And my job, after being a teacher for 23 years, is now to inspire and empower the next generation to be lifelong creators. Now, I think that's been always my job. And um, I'm really uh, pleased to be able to do that on a sort of global scale now with Adobe, which uh, is the company that really um, is the, the leader in creativity in terms of creativity software around the world. This gives you a, a sense of how many apps we actually have. There's over 100 applications and, uh, and services that we offer uh, for people in the creative industries and obviously for educators and students as well. If we break those down, um, these are our desktop, laptop applications, uh, which number of them you'll be very familiar with. If we break those down, we've got uh, what's called the Creative Cloud, which is uh, probably the most well-known of our uh, applications. But we also have a whole lot of free mobile applications, which uh, I'm really excited about, and I was able to share a lot of those. In fact, I noticed a number of presenters at the conference were sharing applications such as Adobe Voice and Adobe Slate and Adobe Post. So they're the most popular of our um, mobile free applications that are available mainly for iOS, but uh, some of them also for Android and uh, also some of them becoming more available on just browsers as well if you don't have um, uh, touch devices. These are our services that we offer and uh, the ones that I'm particularly interested in showing you is the Adobe Education Exchange and helpx.adobe.com which is like a one-stop shop for, um, for anyone who wants help from beginners classes to full-on master classes on, on all of our products. So with the Adobe Education Exchange, oh, just before I get to that, these are what we call the Educators Digital Toolkit, the ones that I'm just seeing amazing work being done by teachers and students all over Asia Pacific with. So well, you don't need to know all 100 of our apps, but if you, if you want to get to know some of the ones for uh, teaching and learning, they're the ones that I'd focus on. The Education Exchange now 
has just about hit 285,000 teachers that are on this portal, all sharing ideas on how to work with our software in creative ways. You can see there's over 8,000 resources there and lots of discussions. It's an amazing, dynamic, uh, free portal that I really encourage all educators to be part of, uh, even just to get ideas, whether you're a, a kindergarten teacher right through to a higher education uh, professor. There's so many resources out there for you. The aim of the Education Exchange is to ignite creativity in classrooms worldwide by connecting educators through professional learning opportunities, teaching resources and peer-to-peer -peer collaboration. And before I just talk about the ed education community, let's just jump straight into the Education Exchange. I'm in it now live and uh, it has a, a fantastic way of, of browsing and looking for uh, particular resources under subjects, under year levels, under products and you can do your One service minute. that way. Thanks, Alini. And if you just do a, a general search for any topic at all, you'll be able to find a whole lot of things uh, in there that uh, are free and, and creative commons. The professional learning in there is pretty amazing. You can do uh, live events, you can do uh, MOOCs, and uh, you can do um, uh, the Train the Trainer course, which actually gets you into our education community. And speaking of our education community, we have sort of three levels of it, and some of you might be interested in being part of this, from being a, an education trainer uh, to being a campus leader. And I'll put the URL down there if you're interested in joining our education program uh, and uh, being part of that. But the ultimate is becoming an Adobe education leader, which we kind of appoint you after uh, being a campus leader for a while. So that's basically it uh, that I wanted to share because there's so much out there that we offer and if you are interested in getting in contact with me on being part of my email list from whatever region you're in, particularly if you're in Asia Pacific, then uh, use that URL to get in contact with me. That's it from me, Alinea. I'll stop sharing and uh, see if there's any questions. Thanks, Tim. And I know that um, I've just joined the Adobe um exchange and it is fantastic. I know that a few teachers I saw in the discussion um, a few days ago were asking how do people use um, the Adobe products in the primary classroom so you know I haven't had huge experience but I know of a few teachers who have so I just shared some and I think that's what makes it different. Um, it's just a place where anybody, you don't have to be an expert, if you've just got an idea you can jump in, learn and speak to others about the products so I did get a few great ideas from there as well so definitely check it out um, the Adobe tools are easy and great to use anyone cool. else got any comments and I know Lee you're going to be sharing a little bit more later so about um, slate and voice looks like that's great yeah 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 might well just be sort of real examples of how it's been used in class I absolutely love them the two of my favorite apps the uh, Adobe voice and Adobe slate so yeah cool and they're free they are which makes them even better. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone else have any questions in regards to that for Tim? Um, no question, but I can personally vouch for the exchange. It's a great community, and um, I know that's how I learn how to use a lot of the um, Adobe products through the self place workshops that it offers. And um, I'm not sure if, uh, Tim, you didn't mention, but the Australian educator is actually one of the most active on the community as well. Mm. I, I think it was it last year that we were we filled the top five spots for being the most active um, members on the exchange around the world. Yeah, at one point we were in the top. Uh, had six members in the top ten around the whole world, and that's our education wow. leaders. And of course, Michael is one of our Adobe campus leaders, and uh, it's uh, it's it's great that uh, you're here with us. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, Tim. And I know you've got to run, and we really do appreciate you being part of the show tonight. And if you have got any further questions, um, make sure you do contact Tim. He is always available to help out. Next up, we have Rebecca. So Rebecca will be sharing with us today quiz, Quizlet, if I can say it properly. So let me know when you would like me to start the timer. I'm ready when you are. Off you go. Um, so I'm going to be put the entire screen in, um, talking mostly about Quizlet Live. Um, it's when I was thinking, trying to figure out what would I talk about, this is the thing that's sweeping our school, like our teachers are obsessed, our kids are obsessed, so this is what we're doing. Um, Quizlet.com, most people know, you create or use a deck of cards to review information. Our language teachers love it. Vocab, things like that, we use it all the time. 
And I love it because, for especially for my um, grade 12 students, um, as they study for their IB history test, there were already created decks, which I love because I don't have to do it. Um, someone else has already done it for me. Um, but Quizlet Live is new, and this is brand new in beta. Um, and basically what it is, is that it is a no login mixed group competition. Um, and so I'm a big fan of any time I don't have to log in, and I'm a big fan of when it's kind of low stakes competition, so not like super intense and all of that, but really, really fast. And so I made a little Quizlet for my tutor group. Um, I realized doing 7A is awesome, really shows my Americanism. That's what we call ourselves. Um, and I had all sorts of questions, and they had their exams today, so I just wanted to make it like low stress, easy questions. Where am I from? What are we studying? Um, and then you just hit live, and then what, what students can do is they get a basically a login code on the screen. Um, and that students can immediately log into that, and then they're just put into random teams. Oh, there's it came up on my screen. They would go to that code, randomly put into teams, and then they move quick. And if you, my class is loud when they're moving, and then they try to answer the questions together as a group. Um, and so this is just a really short video of my kids playing this morning. My questions were like high level, like who sang this song? And here you can see that it is a competition, and on the screen they're going. The um, numbers move ahead, and then when they get it wrong, they go all the way back to the beginning. So it becomes a review game. Um, what I also love about it is that it will tell you what they got wrong um, and what they got wrong often. Um, so you can use it as that formative assessment bit. Um, it's just fun. My kids really love it. Um, they really, like they came in today, they're like, are we going to play? And that's, we're not a content heavy course, we're MYP, I don't really care that much if they memorize all the dates and all those things, um, that's what Google's for. But if you're using it for One minute. Um, vocabulary or you're using it for get to know you type things or if for the upper levels it does matter in terms of content, it's really, really simple um, and really fun. And they, I, they learn from it. Um, and so that is my spiel. Um, any questions? Perfect. And you even had 30 seconds to spare. Well done. Thank you. I try. I talk really fast. <laughs> no, I, I love it because, um, as you said, you know, it's not always about just knowing facts. Sometimes, um, you know, with that is what Google is there for, as we all know. But it's a great way. I know that our language teachers at my school use it all the time, and it's the great feedback. I hadn't actually seen the live. It's so brand new. It just came out last week, I think, or last month. Yeah, so I love that how it moves if they get it right or wrong. So it really creates that competition. I think I might have to give it a try. Does anyone else use it or have any questions or comments? Oh, Dean, you're muted. muted. Uh, I've, I've used it, but I've never used the live function, so that looks pretty cool. Yeah, it gets crazy loud. Just I love be crazy loud. Yeah, Learning's it, meant and to it be makes crazy loud. And so it's and it goes like I've done it with my years, like my 11-year-olds up to my my seniors, and they're just as loud and obnoxious, yeah. um, <laughs> which is perfect. Yeah, no, it does, and I think that's a thing. A lot of these tools that we may have heard of do have these updates, so it's great when you come in and reshare it and refresh our brands. And go, well, yeah, I forgot about that tool. I might try it out. So that gives me a little a little test for this week to make sure I do that. So huge thank you Rebecca for sharing that. No problem. Next up is me, so I will just get started, put my timer on and share my screen. Now let me just make sure I've actually got mine open. Yeah, I do. Okay. So Alrighty. I was enjoying yours so much I didn't actually even get a chance to open it. Alright, I'm ready now. So what I'm going to share with you guys tonight is a little bit, oh, if I go to slide one, a little bit of um, 
this year pretty much I, as teachers, we set goals of something we want to achieve by the end of the year. So something I've been trying to work on this year is to create more of a student voice and also to allow my students to document their learning. I just found that a lot of the time my students were having these great conversations and they were doing great learning but it wasn't actually all in one place that I could just easily access it. So I've been trying out a few different things with them and being in year six, they're heading over to high school here in Australia next year. So I wanted to get their independence up to know what is expected of them to set them up for next year. So these are just a couple little examples. So this is goals. So I've linked it to um, the, I, uh, the PYP skills here. So my students know they've got to link their goals that they're setting to the transdisciplinary skills as well as to the PYP attitudes. So they can simply copy and paste these onto the slides. They then wrote a reflection of term one and then I wrote a little comment at the bottom. They then set some goals for term two. So we've just started this this term and I've written a reflection underneath. And then each week they write their goal for the week and then they write the reflection in a different colour and they link it straight away to their attitudes and their skills to show me their understanding. So you can see they're a little example. So that's one thing that I've done and I give feedback through that and that's a blank template. So they've got every week and they just come in each week and they know at the start of the week um, in our language time they are to set up their goal for the week and at the end of the week they do their reflection during their language time. So it's independent learning where I can rove and support where needed. Another thing that we do is we do word study which links to the words their way that I think some schools may be aware of where students get different sorts. And this was really great. I have other teachers come in and support my class during this time but I found it really difficult to actually document and know what they were learning. Did they understand because a lot of it was discussions with other teachers who were in in their supporting. So I simply created a little activity slide. So they have different activities here that they can choose from and then it's got an explanation. Then what they do is they do their word sort and they explain on the right what their sort is about. So it shows me if they've got an understanding of this sort and what they've um, discussed with the teacher. Then it follows up with activities. So the students have to choose two activities. There are both partner activities and individual activities. And they made an essential agreement that, you know, we can't always choose partner activities. It's important to make sure that we choose activities that suit what we're doing and what we need. So right here, this is my evidence to know whether they've understood it or whether they haven't. And this is really good for report writing as well. So over the week, they've got two activities that they need to do. And then they do it again. So it's nice and blank and they just sort of fill it in and then it's documented. The other thing that we were doing in grade six, and I've got a minute left, was book clubs. So my students were given a book that they were required to read over three weeks in a group where they would have discussions and decode and do activities related to the text and question what was happening. And I found that these discussions were fantastic what was happening, but there was only one of me and generally four to five groups in my class. So I found it really disappointing when they said we had a great chat and I had no evidence and I couldn't hear because I was working with another group. It always seemed to be that they had a great chat when I wasn't working with their group that day. Funny how that happens. So I've put together where a little documentation where they can reflect on the book. And to help with their comprehension, they had to write a summary of each each um, third of the book as well as new words that they discovered in their book. Then they also are to take a photo and read a page aloud. And here you can see I'll just play it if it loads. And then what I can do is I can go back to the slide, wherever it is now, I've lost it. Ah, my timer. Um, and I can, once it plays it, and of course it's not going to play it, I'll just quickly show you. And then I can hear their recording. And then that's my evidence of their reading aloud and then I just go through and they do discussion questions with each, with each other and it goes on and then at the end they do a book review of the book. So that's just ways I'm trying to create student voice and independent learning and documenting it along the way. And I'll stop because I've gone over time. Did anyone have any questions? <laughs> I've just got a comment, Lenny. It's what I love about Google Slides is generally when people use a presentation tool, it's a teacher thing and it's me telling you what you've done with that is give over the keys to the kids. So that's a really, really great use of it. 
And the other great thing is we've just started using digital portfolios. So the students have actually just uploaded goals for term two and that every week they add to it, it just updates automatically. So they don't have to continually keep posting things to their digital portfolio. As the slides update, it updates there. So then it becomes visible for parents to see as well as my comments and feedback. So it's just another way I thought of documenting everything. Do parents have access to it, like ongoing, or is it between you and the kids? So at the moment, it's just with me commenting on it, but the students can share their digital portfolio and their parents can see their digital portfolio, so then they can view what the learning's happening through that portal. Cool. Any other questions? Are all done? Perfect. Lucky last today, we have got Lee, and um, Lee is sharing with us making learning real with tech. We had a lot of making learning something tonight, so it's good to see. And you'll be sharing with us Adobe Slate and Adobe Voice. So looking forward to it. Lee, let me know when you're ready for me to start the timer. Is it can you hear me? We can can yes, you see my screen? I'm sharing my screen. Can you see that now? Yeah, yeah. I can yeah, perfect. Yeah, bro, we'll, we'll get we'll get going then if that's okay. Yeah. Off you um, go. So yeah, so I'm, I'm just going to talk about that I did with some of my students that sit here with this app, Motion Math Pizza, which I absolutely love. Um, it's it's a great app. It's sort of a game where the children have to apply math skills in um, a real what to do pizza shops, handle a budget, and you know go and buy ingredients. Um, you know, and as the game progresses, it gets harder. So they've got to judge who price for, for the ingredients. They then have to use their sort of mental uh, calculations to actually serve customers uh, and that sort of thing. So we did that We did that, and just from the engagement and the enjoyment from the children, I wanted to then lead it into um, English. And at the time, they were doing sort of persuasive writing. So we were creating a website for the children's sort of pizza shops. And to do that, we use the app Adobe Slate. So this is a free app, absolutely brilliant. It allows the children to create these amazing, very sort of professional-looking web pages where they can add lots of different content, text, images, that sort of thing. And the final product that they get just looks like it's straight from a sort of, uh, almost like a, an Apple website, something like that, very sort of professional-looking. And from what the task, I just thought, do you know what, there's, there's more to this. So I decided through social media to contact all our local estate, uh, not state, pizza shops, takeaways, deli shops, that sort of thing, and basically asked those businesses whether they would like to hire my class to build a website for them and sort of give the children a real purpose behind all the writing that they were doing. So what was most important was the quality of the writing, um, but it's the way that the technology sort of made it real for them. And we were lucky to have um, a, a local deli shop get in touch and say, yeah, we, we, we'd be quite happy for them to create a website. So we did our writing from that. We did a lot of editing. And as a group, we then created our deli website, which if you then go to the deli nagshead.co.uk, you'll see that it's the actual website used for that business now. And it's just amazing that the way that technology can you know, bring make everything real for that for that for those children. So all their writing now is actually being used by a real company to advertise their product. And the feedback from the actual fantastic, they sent a load of vouchers for the children to go in and get their own uh, sandwiches. And then, uh, as a follow-up, we then made our own sort of advert. And what we did here was we combined Adobe Voice with some green screen. That's going to play. I don't know if the sound's coming through there. No, we haven't got sound. But but I can, can link it. I can link it in anyway. Um, so, yeah, so that was one, one use of Adobe Slate. One uh, minute. Just for the children to actually create a website for a real business. Um, and it was just it just added so much purpose and the quality of the writing as you'll see if you go to the website just absolutely fantastic um, and so I'm constantly on the look for 
um, other places where we can use text in real world in, in environments. So I don't know how many of you have. I don't know if you've got Nando's in Australia. I, I assume yeah, that you do. would do, but in, in, in England they're quite popular. The children absolutely love them. And in most of the Nando's restaurants that you visit, there is the uh, legend of the Barcelos Cockerel story. And when we were doing sort of traditional tales, legends in, in class, we decided to focus on uh, the legend of the Barcelos Cockerel, which is what the symbol from Nando's is based on, an ancient sort of 14th century Portugal um, legend and so the children wrote their own versions and almost as a an assessment tool because we'd, we'd looked at Adobe Voice the children had to then create a visual story of their versions of the Barcelos Cockerel. Again I don't know if that's coming through the sound. No, we can see it but we can't hear it. That's okay. But again this is on, on YouTube so I can send the, the link, link to you and again when we put that on our school blog and we uh, tweeted Nando's, we got amazing response but the best thing about it was was the fact that Rob Papps, the, the sort of chief exec of Nando's in the UK got in touch and actually then sent the children um, some chicken checks so they could all go and enjoy some of the food there with this letter saying how much they loved it with a, with a poster for us to put up in school so again, the children's work there, and it's the way that the technology isn't replacing the writing, the writing's still taking, but it's the way that it's enhancing the final product and then using the internet as a platform to share and showcase the work. You know, it, it sort of links in with my sort of motto, which is when learning is real, learning um, matters. So, um, so yeah, so there's my presentation. I hope I've done it within the four minutes. I'm not sure. I've, I've, I've talked quite quickly there but everything is is on my blog which you will um, just bring stop it there which you will see just there so Mr Parkson ict.blogspot.com so everything I've talked about there you can you can look at but um, but yeah no thank you very very much I um, I hope you've enjoyed it and thank you for that opportunity to talk to you thank you thank you Lee that was fantastic and I must say um, I think that's what teaching today is about making connections to real life examples and you can see the joy on your students faces there you know creating a website for a local shop and then Sorry, Nando's sounds, actually oh that's alright have, have you got me now Sorry, just a second. My sound seems to have gone. Just get bear, bear with me a second. No problem. Problem. Let me try a different set of headphones. Can you hear me now? I'm just going to put these ones on. I'm sorry, I'm going to look like a DJ now, but these are my, my sons. Sorry, go on. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's all right. I was just <laughs> I saying... Didn't want I, I was just saying that you know that's what makes teaching today different. It's about making those real life connections for students and allowing them to, you know, see what impact they can have on the community. And the joy that they had on their faces in those photos was absolutely phenomenal. So huge thank you for sharing that. I know that gives a lot of teachers uh, a lot of ideas. Did anyone have any comments or questions for Lee? I'm just going to make a comment, uh, just a slate and voice. How fantastic they are. I mean, we're using we're oh, using yeah. them right now with our year ones, uh, and they're actually reading stories and interpreting their stories that they're reading, and it's just, they're just eating it up. It's such a fantastic app. They're so intuitive and really great to use, and they make everything look fantastic. I remember the days when you actually had to code it yourself to make everything look beautiful, but now everyone's a designer. It sort of breaks my heart a bit being a design teacher, but it's pretty good. Yeah. I just, I just love the fact that you know it, it's a great way of enhancing the writing process. It's sort of giving children the ability to create content, which is what they sort of crave themselves. So they're sort of watching these sort of videos and visiting these websites. So it's giving them the the, the ability to create their own, which I think is really powerful. Absolutely. Yeah, Mike, what I love is that you didn't just settle for a nice fancy presentation. You actually extended it and gave it voice and said to the kids, yeah, you can create this, but let's make it purposeful and, and authentic. And I think that what you do for those kids then is that they just won't settle for creating something gimmicky. They'll say, let's make a difference. So well done. 
Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, I think at the minute in the UK, there's, um, you know, a, a, a big sort of um, uproar as far as the way the government want us to, to do things, you know, the, the SATs test, that's what we're having to do, it, to do. And for me, it's about trying to make, like you said there, everything meaningful and purposeful. Uh, and children aren't going to want to do that when it's preparing for a test. It's about giving them experiences, um, you know, and that can give them memories that last a lifetime and create an interest that can go on to something more. So, yeah, uh, thank you very much. And I think that's a good message. I know that teachers here in Australia are just about to start a NAP plan for um, students in year three, five, seven, and nine. So, um, yeah, sometimes, you know, it's experiences rather than just a test and it doesn't, as much as a test matters, you know, teachers don't teach, you shouldn't teach to a test, it's about the experiences you create, classrooms shouldn't be boring, it should be fun. But in saying that, we have actually reached the end of tonight's show, so it will be another month, don't hesitate, we will be back on Monday the 6th of June with some more great um, presenters, but just remember to make sure you vote for your favourite presenter, good luck in voting, I think that um, Every presenter today shared some fantastic tools, so um, make sure you do vote. Voting is open till Friday, and make sure you use the hashtag over the next week, as well as next um, week we do have our Twitter conversation. So it will be um, next Monday, the 9th of, oh, it says April, but it's actually May, my a bit of a mistake there, so I'm still living in April. So Monday the 9th of May at 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time and just follow TT Play to have a conversation. So that gives you guys as the viewers a chance to go home, have a little play, test out some of these tools that